No, I, I just got a lot on my mind, that's all. You don't have to worry about the wedding. Mother and I have the whole thing under control. Carol. Would it be terrible of me to ask if we, if we put the wedding off for a while? Not because I don't love you. Listen, I don't want to lose you, but I don't want to lose myself either. It's a shock being out of the army. I don't know how I'm going to do in this job. I don't even know if I'm going to like working in a bank. All I know is I want to be as sure of myself as possible, in as many ways as possible. Listen, I don't want to disappoint either one of us. You want a cigarette? No. Dr. Peter Bernard. Which emergency room is free? Room 107. Okay. She's a nurse in this hospital. Her name's Carol Ingers. Well, we'll have her blood type on record then. You could wait down the hall. I should call her mother. Well, there's a payphone on the other side of the nurse's station. Prepare her for x-ray. A telephone call for Dr. Bernard. Dr. Peter Bernard. I'm sorry, Mrs. Bernard, but he doesn't seem to answer. You weren't going to get me a telephone, Diana. You were going to get me a drink. David, please. I don't want Jason to overhear this. It'll only upset him. Well, then help me out, huh? You've got the money. And why is your precious stepson's sleep so damn more important than your ex-husband's rotten life? You just see it as rotten. No, baby. You do. I can give you a hundred. Oh, Diana. I am going to go to Canada. I am going to get a job. Any job. I heard those new beginning stories for three years, David. Oh, baby. A hundred dollars is nothing. You've got thousands. Pay me off. Come on, get me out of here. Come on. You would have spent every cent I inherited if I hadn't oh. drawn the line. How much did you hide away, huh? 20,000? 30? I don't know. It's invested. I don't pay any attention. I don't owe you anything, David. I really don't. David. Oh. You ruined my life! David, stop I it! Know you don't know me! Please, stop it! Get out of my father's house, or I'll call the police. around you. When are you going to San Francisco? Sometime in the morning.
goodbye. David again. I'm sorry to bother you, but he really scared me this time. What, did he ask you for money? Of course. Well, I think it ought to be reported to the police, especially considering Jason. Well, maybe because of Jason, I ought to give him what he wants. I was thinking maybe I should sell some of my stocks. Diana, you, you just let that money sit for your old age, not his. Are you going to be at the hospital all night? Well, I'm not sure. I had to bring in one of my outpatients. But now, look, if, if you're worried about David, why don't you start for San Francisco tonight, stay over in Santa Barbara, and then finish the trip tomorrow? Well, but what about Jason? Oh, good Lord. Jason and I have batched it for years. He won't mind if you're not there. No, I, I guess he won't. Goodbye, darling. something on my motorcycle. Good night. Jason. DOA. There was nothing we could have done. Oh, my God. What is it, Doctor? For a moment there, I thought we'd lost her. But then her pulse, respiration, blood pressure seemed to have stabilized. The ailments of the human body always fascinate us, but uh, the way it solves its own problems, that's the real mystery, isn't it? I have every reason to believe she'll be much better tomorrow. your mother and she said she'd be down here after dinner. She's gonna bring some of your things. Please. What? Bring me a rose. Watch it. 
thorns. You can smell them, right? Tell me. They smell beautiful. Here. The doctors say that. You know, oh. No, what? What? Oh, Peter! Carol. Peter! Carol, what's Adam? Peter, why? Where's Carol. my husband? Oh, Carol. What are they doing in the garage? say exactly some kind of a routine investigation well, that lieutenant asked me about her ex-husband oh huh? what'd you tell him i told him they had a big fight the night it happened dad is it horrible of me not to mind that she's dead jason my only regret is that the two of you didn't strike it off better i just think you and i lived together too long after mom died we really didn't need anybody else. I wish I'd understood that a little better last year. Oh, you didn't marry Diana just for me, did you? Oh, no, no. Diana was a very loving person, self-reliant. I appreciated those things. I'll get it. Yes? Dr. Bernard, please. Come on in. Dad, someone to see you. Dr. Bernard, my name's Adam Reston. Yes? I've been trying to call you from the hospital. Well, Mr. Reston, uh, I just lost my wife, and I'm not taking on any new patients at the moment. My service should have made that clear. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry to barge in, but I need to know something. Did you or your wife personally know a nurse at the hospital by the name of Carol Enders? No, not to my knowledge. Doctor, my fiance's in the hospital right now. Well, what's that got to do with me? She's got a concussion, Doctor. And she's been calling out for you. So? She thinks that you're her husband. I never saw that girl before in my life. Now, here's a picture of my wife. There is absolutely no resemblance. Has she had her bandages off yet? Seen herself in the mirror? No. That doesn't explain why she keeps calling out for you. You're not her husband, but she insists that you are. It's all rather hard to believe, Mr. Reston. More than a little painful. My wife died not more than 50 feet from here two nights ago. Peter? Is that you? You recognize my voice? Oh, yes. Oh. oh, darling, thank God you're here. How's Jason? He's, uh, he's fine. Good. He sends you his love. Really? Is he really, Peter? Yes. Yes, now I... Don't you think you ought to take it easy now? I want to get those bandages off your eyes just as soon as we can. Honey, uh... There's some man here, uh, uh, Mr. Reston. He keeps driving me crazy. He keeps calling me Carol. Well, that, don't worry. Uh, I'll talk to him for you, honey. to see you again, won't I? I'm counting on it. I promise you. I don't know. She sounds just like Diana. 
not exactly the voice, but the rhythms. And obviously, she's taken enough time to pry into my personal life, or you have. And Mr. Reston, I don't know exactly what you hope to gain by all this, but at the slightest invasion of my privacy, I assure you, I will go directly to the police. Do you understand that? Yeah, but nobody's putting on an act, Doctor. No. She's sick in some way. But Dr. Palmer called it a personality disorder. She'll get treatment and get better. I certainly hope so, for both our sakes. Dr. Bernard have any explanation? Oh, yeah. He thinks we're pulling some kind of a con job. But I guess if I was a man in his position, I'd have to agree. Now, when's the psychiatrist going to see her? Well, if this condition continues, once the bandages are off and she sees herself, they're going to be fighting over that case. But Carol seems to know everything about Dr. Bernard and his son. Now, how's the psychiatrist going to explain that? I don't know if he can. Any more than I, as a doctor, can explain her physical recovery two nights ago. At least not in medical terms. What do you mean? Well, there were two crises in this hospital on the same floor at the same time. Dr. Bernard's wife died of massive bodily injuries at the same moment that Miss Enders was succumbing to her brain damage. And yet suddenly, inexplicably, there's practically nothing wrong with Miss Enders, except for that temporary loss of sight. I mean, it's as though Mrs. Bernard's spirit had somehow invaded your young lady's body and kept it alive. Oh, come on, doctor. Dr. Bernard, what are you suggesting? That Diana Bernard's soul went into Carol's room and took over her body instead of going straight up? Oh, oh, no. Mr. Reston, when I was in the Peace Corps in India, there were thousands of sick crammed into this railroad station after a flood. There wasn't a moment when someone wasn't dying. And you could feel the air, thick with the spirits. It was like incense. And no one stopped to even question it. Now for me, after that, it was only a decision whether to become a doctor or a priest. Of course, my report will say she's in a post-comatose state suffering from personality disorders. I mean, it covers so little, it covers everything. Well, there's got to be another explanation for it. There has to be. M may I talk to her? That might just be the best thing for her. Security officer, please go to 133 West. Nurse? Yes, officer. Will the security officer... Mr. Reston's going to talk to Miss Enders. Carol. Excuse me, it's, it's Adam. Do you have any official duties in this hospital, Mr. Reston? No, I'm just personally concerned about your health. Yeah, and that woman who keeps insisting she's my mother, who's she? Why isn't she under treatment? You don't know either of us? Oh, stop it! Listen, you had an accident. It's understandable you could have amnesia, not know who you are. But to behave so convincingly like you're someone else... Uh, uh, hi, yes, uh, Dan Petrie, please. Have you spoken to my husband about this? No, not completely. Will do. I have hundreds of friends and they all know who I am. Hi, Dan, Diana Bernard. Who would you say? Diana, Diana Bernard. I'm in the hospital. I just breezed through a pretty bad car accident, but, uh, but I'm okay. I've been lying here kind of worrying about my ex-husband. Dan, I'd like you to sell about $5,000 worth of the stock. You say you're uh, in the hospital? Yeah, I totaled the car, but I'm fine. Well, is there a, a doctor there I can talk to? Uh, well, not right here. Is there anyone? Here, does your Carol have a broker named Dan Petrie? Mr. Petrie, I'm a friend of this lady's. Look, I don't care who you are, but if you're thinking about ripping off this account, you better check the papers. Diana Bernard died two days ago. But you, you do know her, and she did have an account there. Sure, I was a broker for years. But as far as any other information goes, I don't know what you want it for, but you're not getting it from me. In fact, you're going to get it right from the police if this is repeated. Give me the phone. 
phone. He hung up. What do you mean he hung up? Hey, you listen to me, will you? He hung up because he can't understand what's going on in here any more than I can. Diana Bernard died two days ago. Not more than an hour after her accident. What's going on around here? Who are you? What are you trying to do to me? You're alive. This is on my head, not my face, not me. Listen. Listen. Two days ago, Diana Bernard was dying. Oh. Her body was destroyed, but not her mind, her will to live, her spirit, her soul, whatever you want to call it. But in here, Carol's body was undamaged. But her brain was dying, or some part of it. Somehow, Diana's spirit invaded Carol's body. That's not impossible. Carol, I don't have any other explanation for it. But Peter, he, he accepted me. He sent me Jason's love. Yeah, yeah, Peter. Peter didn't want to make a scene. Look, he thinks you're seriously disturbed, or... Uh... But I, I know everything about us, things that nobody else could... Miss Mr. Reston, look, look at me. I'm, I'm on the girl, you know. I don't know. You look like Carol. But you don't act like the Carol I love. Oh, it must be even harder for Peter. At least I look right to you. What do the doctors around here think about this? They, uh, they haven't said much. Not yet. They want to run some tests and talk to you. Have a psychiatrist study your case. Well, what do I do? You don't have to do anything. Everybody wants to help you, even though they don't understand what's going on. They are your friends. I, I never, I never miss Carol. I loved her more. Preston. Mr. Reston, this is Lieutenant Correa. He uh, is with the police department. He was downstairs getting a transcript of Mrs. Bernard's death certificate when he apparently heard rumors of our friend here. Evidently, Miss Enders is a friend of the victim or is pretending to be the victim? Victim? Yes, Mr. Reston. An examination of the wrecked car leads us to believe that Mrs. Bernard's death was not an accident. We think she was murdered. Wait, what do you mean murdered? But how? Well, if we found a cut brake cable and there was a pinhole opening punched in the hydraulic brake line. 
since someone downstairs suggested that Miss Enders was claiming that she knew everything about Dr. Bernard's wife, I thought I'd better speak to her. Look, Miss Enders is a nurse in this hospital. There's no other connection. Well, for a detective, that's a pretty big connection. Do you think she knew anything about Mrs. Bernard's ex-husband, David Hastings? I never heard her mention the name. Well, I'd like to be sure. You see, Jason Bernard, that's Dr. Bernard's son. He testified that David Hastings was in their home the night the accident occurred. Jason said that Hastings threatened her life. Excuse me. Lieutenant, can I talk to you for a minute? Excuse me. What have you talked to her about? She knows the truth. And I told her your theory. How'd she take it? Not well at first. But I think she trusts me now. We'll work it out. Well, then why don't you break the news to her? I need your help. Do you know David Hastings? He's my ex-husband. Did he ever threaten to kill you? He's, he's threatened me, but never like that. The police think that he murdered you. He tampered with the brakes of your car. Oh, no, he, he couldn't. He's violent, but, but kill me, no. It's... But Diana Bernard's stepson said that he heard David Hastings threaten to kill you. Oh, no, 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 but that's, that's, that's not right. I can straighten that out. Can I? Look, you were with me all that night. They're not going to buy anything else. You want to get into it with them now? Sanders, this is Lieutenant Correa of the police department. Just one question, if you don't mind. Do you happen to know an engineer currently unemployed named David Hastings? Not that I can remember. Do you have no idea where we could find this man? Why are you asking me this? Well, you made a phone call. A little while ago, through the switchboard, you said you were Mrs. Bernard. Mrs. Bernard? No, uh, no, there's, there's some mistake. I, I, I know her husband works in the hospital, but uh, I wouldn't know her, the woman, if I saw her. A Adam tells me that that she may have been killed. That's not possible, is it? Why not? Well, who would want to kill a woman like that? David Hastings, maybe? Yes, see you. Are you all right? Would you like a sedative or something? No. Oh, wait. I, I'd, I'd like to get up a little while later and walk in the corridor. Is that all right? Sure, I'll tell the nurse at the desk. I do not understand this. I can't figure... Doctor, what is she trying to pull on us? That switchboard operator wasn't lying. She said she was Mrs. Bernard. Well, now she was hit on the head. She had a bad concussion. You have to make a lot of allowances for that. When was she admitted? We came in together about an hour before, before Mrs. Bernard did. May I see those admission reports? Sure. I want a statement from you, too.
Sanders? Where's Carol? Don't you know? She's gone. You mean she wasn't released? No, she's run off. I don't know what was going on in her mind about playing games, but obviously it wasn't working out, so she called it quits. No, doctor, no one's calling it quits. She stuck with it. She is your wife. I don't like this game, Mr. Reston. And I came up here to straighten it out. Look, doc, there's not time to go into it now. I have to find Carol. The police must have told you that someone murdered your wife. Well, they have a theory, apparently. Yeah, well, I've got a theory, too, that Carol's out right now looking for whoever it was that murdered her. But it's Diane's mind running that search, but it's Carol's body that's in danger, and that just scares the hell out of me. One of Tony's friends. School isn't out for a half hour yet. Who is it? Carol Enders, Mrs. Wyatt. I'm, I'm a friend of Diana Bernard's. You told Diana about us? Never. What do you want? Police are looking for David. I have to talk to him. What am I going to do? Please let me come in. I'll, I'll try and explain. No Mrs. Bernard ever even came here. No, but she once had David followed. It wasn't mentioned in the divorce proceedings. That wasn't really the important thing. What was? The bitterness and the resentment. You know, I was a space engineer making $30,000 a year when I married Diana. Then the world got bored with the moon and I got stuck in a field nobody needs. You know, I liked what I did. I mean, there were some real thrills in those days. Well, I'm sure there were others in your position. Did they give up? Give up? You know, that's just how she put it. Oh, I tried a lot of things. I just couldn't hold them together. Well, I'm sure she tried to help you. Oh, with money, sure. Yeah. But you showed weakness around Diana and she'd cut you out. The, the police have a theory that, uh, that she was killed. They think you did it. Me? Oh. When I'm drunk, I've done some stupid things, but I could never kill anyone. You see, I got plans. I don't want to blow them. I have a son. Eight. We're all going to Canada. I think he'll like it up there. He's a good boy. I don't know, I'll try it in a factory for a while, or maybe welding on the pipeline. What the heck? Anything else I've tried hasn't worked. What's to lose? I don't seem to have much money with me, but I'll get some more to you. Please take it. I want to help. Thank you. But I really don't understand why. Well, I, I knew Diana. Probably better than anyone. She was hard on you, David. A lot harder than you deserved. And Susan won't let you feel like a failure, and that's important, isn't it? I spotted about 10 minutes ago. You check it out? Not yet. Okay. This slot belongs to that apartment number 302. Okay. 
Let's go. David, there's a police car out there. Don't run, David, please. Hey, I know you didn't kill Diana. I can help you. How can you help? I never saw you before. Well, I can. I promise you I will. Police! Oh, David Hastings? Yes. You're under arrest. I have to tell you anything you say may be used. Miss Anders, what are you doing here? That's impossible, Lieutenant. She was in the hospital the night Mrs. Bernard was killed. She was a nurse in the hospital. Maybe she was having an affair with Dr. Bernard. She has to fit into this someplace. Well, she doesn't. Not in any way that'd make any sense to you. Try me. Lieutenant, have you ever heard of possession? When one mind takes over the body of someone else? Around here, possession means holding, pot, hard drugs, maybe just a needle. And there's nothing psychological about it. Well, there's nothing psychological about this either. It's spiritual, beyond explanation. Diana Bernard's mind is living on in the body of Carol Enders. Look, I book them on fingerprints and mug shots. That woman is Carol Enders. That woman knew where David Hastings was hiding out. Now, we've got hard evidence that Hastings tampered with the brake lining of Diana Bernard's car. That makes her a suspect as an accomplice. So you're going to book her as an accomplice in the murder of Diana Bernard? Suspicion of conspiracy, protecting a fugitive. But she is Diana Bernard. You can't arrest her for murdering herself. Well, Miss Enders, thank you. You claim David Hastings was innocent. Now, why would you say a thing like that? Because he has enough trouble planning his own life. He couldn't possibly lay out a scheme to kill me. I know him. I was married to him three years ago. Miss Enders, three years ago, you were in nursing school and living at home. David Hastings was at the Bernard home the night she died. The boy says that Hastings threatened his stepmother's life. His exact words were, I'll kill you. He never said that. Miss Enders, you were unconscious when that took place. Isn't there anything I can do to prove this? Do you have a copy of the accident report? Yeah. Who knows the details of that report? Myself, the two officers who reconstructed it, and my supervisor. That's all? Well, details of a report like this very often become material evidence. We keep it confidential. What about the victim? Who would know the details better than Diana Bernard? I know I'm making you relive an impossible memory. But you've got to tell us exactly what happened in that car. Diana, just how did you die? Well, I was, I was tired that night. I was worried that I'd been too selfish with David. I was about 10 or 12 miles up the coast road, I guess. It, going too fast. I tend to speed. I'm sorry. How fast? 65, 70. And then you just lost control. Well, I was going around a, a right-hand curve. Oh, and there was another car coming, and it, it, it blinded me for a second. And, and then when I, I hit the brakes, nothing happened. Did you hit anything? Well, well, the, the car s swerved off the road, and... I, I was going down an embankment. I remember trying to uh, fight for control of the car. And then and there was uh, a pole. Uh, no, no, it was too big for a pole. It, oh, my God, I had the truth. <laughs> I put this in my report. The department's going to have me back in East L.A. checking licenses. Then you do believe her. 
All I know is you got a witness there anybody would be out of their mind to put on the stand. You want to drive 12 jurors crazy? <sighs> Look. Hastings said he'd kill you. He went to the garage. He found some tools. He cut the emergency brake cable. He made a pinhole cut in the hydraulic line. Did you tell him you were going up to San Francisco? No, but he couldn't have gotten in the garage. I had to unlock it from the inside. Now, how could you know that? You were in the hospital. Then don't ask her if she told him she was going to San Francisco. You cannot bang the silent zero in search of sound. That's a Chinese poem. And I'm going to take its advice. You stay here. I'll arrange your release. This isn't a very easy situation for either of us. I'm sorry. I'm not who you want me to be. If you know your ex-husband didn't kill you, then somebody else out there did. And if you do anything that's threatening to him in any way, they'll fight back. I think I know who killed me. Who? Other people's feelings are going to be deeply involved. It doesn't frighten me. It just makes me terribly sad. I've got a very painful responsibility, and I've got to handle it myself. Do the police know that you left the hospital without being released? I guess not. Are you going to tell them? Adam, please, this is something I have to do alone. Miss hey, Enders, you're free to go. Carol. I'm not Carol. you going with her? I don't know what to do. I want to protect her. But I don't have any right to stop her. She's absolutely sane. Yeah, this is Lieutenant Correa. Yeah, that's my case, all right. Huh? Yeah. Okay. You know a man by the name of Dan Petrie? Yeah. That's the guy she called from the hospital. Well, he's on his way down to talk to me. on your shoulders? No, it's all on my hips. It, it's perfect, Dad. Yeah, well, you see, that's the way it's supposed to be. This is the best one. I bought the same kind myself. Hey, hey we got a match set? Yeah. We could be a team. <laughs> How about the bag? Well, you said to get mummy bags. Yeah, but it's got to be down filling. Well, wait, wait. There's all kinds of down. You see, there's a pecking order and sleeping bags, too. Now, there's, uh, there's a duck down. Yeah, yeah, that's good. But you just feel the way this fluffs up. This isn't even white goose down. This is gray goose down. It is primo number one stuff. This is good at even 30 below. Oh, fantastic. What were you doing, Jason?
you seen a wire cutters out in the shop? Uh, not, not for a while, why? Well, I just wanted to make an adjustment in this pack, but pliers would do just as well. You want me to get them? Okay. What are you doing here? Don't get excited, Jason. I'm not going to cause any trouble. I don't know you. What are you after? What have you, what have you dropped down that drain? Everybody drops things down that drain. The night your stepmother died, a nail? You couldn't know. Well, I do, Jason. As much as I regret it, I'm gonna have to tell your father! Jason! Jason! I was just going to call you. She was poking around. What are you doing here? I have to talk to you. Alone. All right, Jason. Everything's fine. Just fine, okay? Sanders. I suppose you know breaking into a house is a crime. I just don't understand you. When I first talked to you in the hospital, I thought, well, either she's crazy or she wants something from me. Now, what is it? Please. Peter, Jason's in trouble. He's done a terrible thing. Now, now I don't think you realize what he's now, done. Now, look, you don't know anything about Jason. Now, you're fishing for something. What is it? Do you remember Cynthia Woods? Cynthia? What about her? She broke her hip skiing three years ago. And you operated on her. I was just a, a friend that came to visit. You asked me to have coffee with you in the cafeteria, and, and we got to talking about skiing. Good God. We went away to Aspen for a month, and when we got back, we got married. Now, Jason felt very left out. I don't, I don't think he's ever forgiven me for that. It is you, isn't it, Diana? <sighs> How is this possible? I don't know. I know it's not my body, but somehow I've inherited it. Outside in the garage for the first time, I felt the other person coming back, and, and I fought her off. I, I fought to stay in this body. What were you doing in the garage? Peter, I saw Jason out there the night I left. The night I was killed. He, he was looking for something, something that had fallen down a drain. What? Well, I found it tonight. It's some kind of very sharp nail. The, the police say they're looking for something like that. They think that David used it to somehow punch a hole in my brakes. David? Yeah, they picked him up today. They, they found some wire cutters in his car. Now, I don't know how to tell you this, Peter. Jason must have looked up his address and planted the wire cutters on him. Jason? Well, he has a motorcycle. He knows about mechanical things. Now, I don't think he planned to put the blame on David until he heard us arguing that night. I can't believe that. I just... Well, maybe it was just childish vengeance. Maybe he didn't even think I died. Just... Just be away for a while in the hospital so he could have you all to no, himself again. No, 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 no way. Not that boy. He might have been jealous of you, but he would never kill. You were my wife and I loved you. He would never hurt anyone that he thought that I loved.
Did you love me, Peter? Of course I did. I, I wasn't just a mother for Jason. A woman who said how hard she tried to make him feel like her own son. Who was willing to learn how to do all the things that you and Jason did together? I appreciated all those things, of course. I, I don't think Jason thought he was killing someone he thought you loved. It's a horrible accusation to make against my own son. I can't accept it. Peter, you've got to face up to it. Now, David didn't kill me. And the only thing that's going to get him off for sure is Jason's confession. Now, now, the boy's young. He's, he's emotionally unstable. They'll take all of that into consideration. How can I put my own son in jail? How can you let an innocent man take the blame? I, I know it's a, a horrible position to be in. I'm, I'm so sorry about the whole thing. They can't prove anything against Jason. Peter, he lied to the police when he said David threatened to kill me. Now, he never said that. And it seems he told them the garage was open and that David could have gotten in any time. Well, that's not true either. Well, who's going to testify to all that? You? No. You're going to talk to Jason. He won't lie to you. And, and then you'll both come forward. I know you will. I don't think I can. Well, someone has to, and it's hateful for me to be the one. But I'll, I'll go to them with this if I have to. If you make me. It's just a nail. How can it be that important? I can't swamp David for Jason. It's so wrong. Possibly you're right. This isn't just an ordinary nail. Uh. I've seen it someplace before. It's some kind of pin to... It's a pin to hold fractures together. Uh, David, Jason must have gotten it out of your bag and... After I spoke to this woman who claimed to be Mrs. Bernard, I got to thinking about it. It's strange, see, because... There are no more funds in Mrs. Bernard's account. What? Or well, something happened a couple of weeks ago. I didn't think anything of it at the time, but now I don't know. Here, Lieutenant, read this. Dear Dan, this letter will authorize the transfer of any funds to my husband's account at his discretion. Is that her signature? Yes, I know the signature. I even checked it again before I called you, but that letter is a copy made from a duplicating machine. I, I just accepted it. Well, according to the notation, the original was sent to her attorney. That seems reasonable. It seemed so to me, too, until tonight. I called the attorney just to check. He never received the original. I know it could have been lost, but uh, I thought you ought to know. Wait a minute. Let me see this. I used to work with copying machines in the Army and now at the bank. You can do a paste-up with these machines. That's where you move the signature from one document to another. What happened to the funds in her account? Uh, she had about uh, $100,000 that she inherited from her father. She went through almost half of that while she was married to a man named uh, Hastings. Yeah, we know about him. Right after she married the doctor, she told me not to let her touch the rest of it. That is, until I got that. Then what happened? Well, our brokerage firm also handles the doctor's account, but I'm not his broker. I would never have let him get into the commodity game, especially Coco. <laughs> it's like a crap game. You make a fortune, drop a fortune. Nobody can figure it. You want to invest in Coco? Buy a candy bar. <laughs> anyway, that's what I tell my clients. But the doctor gets this very hot tip from one of his patients. Blows a hundred grand. Then I get this letter and first thing, you know, that's the end of her money too. Look, can we go out to his house and confront him with this? Carol's out there, I'm sure, but I'm worried about her. At this time of night, on what grounds? Now, I can't prove that this is a forgery. And there's no crime about not having the original. Let me see it. Look, I'll buy you two tickets to the Super Bowl if you can prove that that's a paste-up copy. Okay. You've been out to his house. Does he have a copying machine there? No. How about his office? Yeah. Well, maybe I can prove it, but I've got to see the machine first. Thank you, Mr. Petrie. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you 
never got the original, you can be sure it was destroyed. Hey, there's some checks of hers with her signature on it. If he did it, he was smart enough not to use this typewriter. Here we go. Signature's crooked. Well, it takes more than a couple of tries, you know, to get it perfect here. Or it could have been a real copy of a real letter. Probably done in their typewriter at home. She could have had it copied anywhere. What makes you think you're going to prove that he put it all together on this copier? No way. Look at See this here? This machine uses a sort of paper negative. There should be an impression left on it of everything that's gone through this machine for weeks. I don't see anything there. I never heard of this gimmick. I know these machines. We use them in the Army for classified material. Now, there's a special attachment that re-exposes the negative so nobody can check it out. All you got to do is get your photo lab people to find the right developer. I hope we come up with something. OK, bring it along. Doctor would be expected to do. Yeah. Uh, I'll be with you, Jason, in the living room. Everything all right? Everything's fine. sedative. She's very sick, mentally. Why was she in the garage? Why were you in the garage, Jason? The night that Diana was killed. Oh, I wasn't. Who says I was? Oh, look, I'm not attacking you, son. I just want the truth. Did you see me? Did you? Yes. Last week, they sent me home from school for helping out on something. I saw you in the garage. I don't know why I didn't say anything. It was your expression or something. And the cutters? You can't leave them around. You cut something, and it makes grooves in it, and they can match those so with the cutter. You, you, you got rid of them. <laughs> well, we're a team. We, we got the same backpacks. Oh, God. It's bad enough what I did. But for you to have seen it. But you wouldn't have done it without a real good reason. Was she cheating on you, Dad? Jason. You know what happens if all this comes out? It won't. I figured it all out. I looked up Rex old man's address and I put the cutters in his car. No fingerprints. Do you realize what we're talking about? Jason. Jason. What would happen if... if we weren't living here? If, what would happen if we... We lost this place. <sighs> you know, I paid 130 bucks for these. They're the best, Jason. I always, I always know the best. Some people have to buy them cheap, pay 30, 40 bucks for them. 
We've always traveled first class. Tell me, Jason, tell me that that's important to you. Please. I figure we can work anything out. Jason, you know, that, that woman, if she goes to the police, all the stitches are out. I could give her a stronger sedative. Wouldn't anybody know? You and me. Who is she? Jason, I want you to get on your motorcycle. I want you to go over to my mother's house and spend the night. Because what I have to do here does not concern you. And please forgive me, son. Please. Sure, Dad. I'm afraid, that's all. That's more than I was ever able to admit. Okay, okay, fine. Well, they got something on their way down. It took them long enough. Okay, okay, we're doing our best. There you go, Lieutenant. I uh, hope this is what you needed. Yeah, me too. There it is. Three copies of the letter. Yeah, it looks like you didn't get it right until this one. I owe you two tickets to the Super Bowl. Let's get out of the house. That's what the siren's for. Peter? Yes. I just had a strange dream. I on skis and you were, you were huge. Just. Oh, that's just fine. You just go to sleep. Everything's fine. Just fine. Thank you. 